Hi there, and welcome to the in, to the tutorials, now the numerical playground of Model 6. So here we're going to work out four cases, and I hope I'm going to cover all the numerics that we have seen, and you're going to get a better good idea, uh, a, be a better idea of what is going on, okay, in SB Skin, SB Solution, Control D. So the pr first case, it's a very easy case. No, it's a pure convection case. It's a one-dimensional geometry passive scalar that we know that we have an analytical solution here, but we're going to put into practice now all the numerical scheme for the discretization of the convective term. Is the one is the tricky one. So you have this this case located here, okay, in this directory orthogonal 1D. And Basically, in the, here, just see, uh, follow what I'm going to you, to do. So just by looking at what you're doing, I think you can get any a very good idea what is happening. So this is our problem, our domain. We're solving this equation, pure convection. Okay, so. For these boundary conditions, we have an analytical solution, okay? So we have velocity and the quantity here, T1, zero gradient, zero gradient, one, okay? So an initial condition. So for these conditions, and if I let run the simulation for 0 0.5 seconds, this is your analytical solution. Here you have one, and here you have zero. Now that concentration, there is no diffusion. So this is your analytical solution. So. It is a uh, stupid pro uh, problem, but from a numerical point of view, it's very difficult to resolve, okay, as we studied already in the theory. And the problem here, you see that your gradients, okay, you have this discontinuity, so there are not, your derivatives are not continuous anymore. So this case is super fast, and you can put into, into practice all the methods that we studied or all the methods implemented in OpenFOR. So see that what we have here, you have the blue line, okay, this is your solution, see that your exit solution, and you use uh, we see that you are adding a lot of numerical uh, dissipation. Then you have the linear, and see that the linear, you have the, those oscillations. Then you have linear wind, and see that linear wind, you have some oscillation there, it's very accurate, but you have that oscillation there. That might be a problem, so maybe later we can add a gradient limiter, because so far we're not adding a uh, limiters here okay and see that is you you put some other methods like the quick also they all all of them give how suffers the same problem and here we have the comparison with the tvd skins i see that all the tvd skins are very bounded okay and resolve well the solution so this is how you need to choose the numerical skin but as you see here this is a very severe it's an easy problem but for numerical speaking is a it's a test killer problem okay it will, it's, it's very severe okay so the linear wind will fail or not failing it's giving a little bit of boundedness but all all the <coughs> 3d skins are working fine but still linear wind is a very good method okay then we change a little bit now so we compare here different gradient limiters using linear wind and this mesh side with this cfl number and see the difference now that you have different methods gauss linear you have this oscillation but then it, when you the, the second that you add the limiting and the gradient see that that problem is gone so see that the linear win and then when you add that limiter you solve the problem okay so here you see is why this scheme is recommended it works very well okay and see here that when you put this action the, the this coefficient to zero is equivalent to the gauss linear clearly you see here okay here we have another comparison the different uh <coughs> gradient limiters as well with different co coefficients and see that there is some slight difference there okay and so on you will have here comparison different methods okay so we go least square gauss linear and here we have comparison of time derivatives time de discretization okay so see that we have crank nicholson blending factor using cell limited so see that we're using crank Nichol nicholson 0, 0, 5 and one one is a pure crank nicholson second order i see that it's a little bit oscillatory instead when you have the red line zero the older see that it's a little bit more bounded but it adds a little bit more numerical diffusion as you see here the difference okay so also in time you have that that influence and just to conclude this <coughs> visual explanation say that comparison different cfl numbers i mentioned there is no limit in the CFL number, no, the method, the, the, the implementation is in, in place. But see what happens when you use a very large CFL number, you are losing a lot of uh, a lot of information, a lot of accuracy. Okay, so the solution might be stable, but 
from the point of view of accuracy, pretty much this is, this is really bad. Okay, so see about what happens when you increase your CFL number. See that you start to lose some information. And here one, see that where you are. It seems to be a lot, but it's much less than 10 or, or 5. And what is interesting is that if you aim for the same CFL number, and let's say that I want to uh, run the simulation with a CFL of, of, of 5, but I want to get the same accuracy as the CFL of 0 0.5, what you need to do is now refine your, your mesh at here. So see here that you have that comparison here. So see that the simulation CFL5 with a thousand cells, okay, which is this dashed line here, is equivalent to the simulation of CFL 0 0.5 with that hundred cells. Okay, so see that this is a compromise. So you know that CFL5 you are going to run very fast. Okay, your your outcome will be very fast, but you are going to lose accuracy. So if you want to keep that accuracy compatible to soon smaller CFL, you need to increase your cell count and use it as an order of magnitude. So this is a small case. Okay, there is no problem. But imagine that you are running a case one million cells. So from one million, you will need to go to ten million or even more just to get the same level of accuracy. Okay, so you see that it's a there is a lot of compromise in CFD. You give away somewhere, but you need also to recover somewhere something. Okay, so be careful with that. Beautiful case. Play with this case and I will show you, you now <clears throat> a little bit how to set up. So here for, for your exercise will be all use all time discretization schemes, all the special discretization schemes, gradient discretization schemes, gradient limiters, different mesh resolutions and time steps. Something, uh, an exercise that I also like to, to, to do is that we know the numerics and we, we know what will happen if I choose linear. So it's also an exercise, try to make this solver crash. Okay, make it diverge. We know how to make it converge. Now make it diverge. Okay, so here you have a few exercises. Okay, so you can try to to address these this, this different exercises, and then during the Q and A uh, session, we can address now if you have problems. So now let me show you this case in action and something else. So as you go here, it's pure. So as you go one on one, if if the end, you see that you have different cases we're going to address just four cases then the other one you can open the folders and you see what what is happening in this one in particular this one this is related to the comparison between a steady and unsteady solvers and a steady unsteady physics okay it's the cylinder case but we want to go this one pure convection okay we have orthogonal mesh this is the perfect mesh and just to show you here here you have some interactive plots okay so so you can you can open those html files Okay, this is your solution. Let me go. It should be this one. So see here that we have in this one, we have we have a comparison of different methods. Okay, so see that the linear method, the green line, see that is very oscillatory, and this is a problem. Okay, so see that eventually that will diverge, but all the other methods, okay, they are working fine. The linear win here. We're not using gradient limiters, so see that it's a little bit unbounded, but it's still a good a good method. So to avoid this unboundedness there, we just add a linear li uh, a gradient limiter that probably is this experiment here. So see that li gradient limiter. So linear win, and now adding the gradient limiter. Okay, so see that these lines here, okay, you have it here, no gradient limiter or a low value, but when you put a very aggressive, okay, one or zero five, I think also works, see that you are removing this information. So basically you are removing when the solution becomes oscillatory, when you have that unboundedness. So that is what is called clipping. So you remove information, you add some numerical diffusion, but okay, but see that is not much, okay? That is, <clears throat> that is acceptable in this case. So. To solve this problem, you need to remove information, but it is something acceptable, okay? So in this case to run, okay, uh, remember always you have this automatic scripts and as you go here, we're going to use this solver. It's a scalar transport, okay? It's pure convection, okay? It's a simple solver, okay? So it's going to ask just in, in transport properties, you need to give diffusion coefficient, you put it to zero, 
when not resolving the diffuse the diffuse the, the stir, just the convective convective stir and time derivative. You go into the boundary conditions. Okay, you have p and u. C0 is the current number, so that was computed using function objects. And see that you have your standard setup, okay? And then if you enter into system, okay, we open the traditional K, uh, dictionaries to run, you have control D, but interesting is SB skin. So see that in SB skin, I put all the all the most, not all, but the most important numerical methods so that or discretization schemes that you are going to find an open phone. Okay, so you can play with all of these. Okay, it's up to you. Okay, so just to show you, okay, so I go here, 101 FBN, and if I go into pure convection and orthogonal 1D, so orthogonal is the perfect mesh in three meshes, a triangular mesh, so pretty much the same. And let me run here, run all, so it's going to to run using this default discretization and see that it's doing also the sampling and see that in this case linear wind with no gradient limiters you have that oscillation there okay so how do we remove that well just go and let's apply a good uh gradient limiter so let me use this one okay and let's run again so as you put it there, see that problem solved. Okay, so this is the numerics. And what I'm giving you here, this, this is the default that you have in this slice is the setup that you will use 95% of the time. Okay, something like this. Okay, this great and linear win for the convective term of the transport quantities. Okay, this is a very good discretization scheme. But it's interesting that maybe if I go here, a pure crank Nicholson, it might become a little bit oscillatory. So now there is no problem, okay, here. So it's working fine. But sometimes, you no, know, uh, in, in time, the temperature derivative can give you some problems. So in this case, see that we focus only in time discretization, gradient schemes, and divergence schemes. Here, we don't need to touch this and this because we don't have these this terms in the equation that, that we are solving. So you can change so just to recall you to remind you that you can go here you go linear and let's run linear and see that linear it will give you a solution but this is this is not a sector see that is you have this wiggles those oscillations so as you visualize the solution okay you see that that in the sample sampling okay we're sampling a horizontal line okay so in a line here in the domain so if you plot your solution see that you have those oscillations there that can give you problems. They are non-physical, something that you should avoid. Uh, so let me go back here and put this one. So as you see here, there are many gradient discretization schemes. Okay, so I put it here. Here you have these, there are very, very interesting ones that uh, this one are, tends to be way more accurate than least square and this one. So see that you have this limiter here, the qubit and the Benkatrakeshnan limiter. Okay, so these are better limiters than the one that you have here. Now you have cell limited, which is the min mod. Here you can change the limiter. Okay, so in some situations, this is much better. It's even better to use these schemes. Okay, so at this point, Feel free to pay, to play to play with this case and draw your own conclusions. But as as I say, the default one for you for any case, go here, put default, okay, Gauss linear or any of these methods. You you can use linear, Gauss linear or least square or any of these methods. Okay, but put your 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 gradient limiter. Okay, so most of the time like the cell limited Gauss linear, but also this one, this function here, it is okay. Actually, this is equivalent to, to what you are going to find in commercial software. Okay, and when it comes to the divergence of the transport quantity, go for for a uh, linear wind, okay? And in some cases that you have very severe physics, okay, stuff like shock wave or problem combustion, here maybe it's better to go for a good TBD scheme. So there are many TBD schemes, but my my choice, my the one I really like is the min mod. So let me show you this setup. So if we run here, we're going to get a very good solution, okay? And there you go. 
okay so this is the numerics okay so don't get lost in all those methods that you have there so you just use what is known that it, it works fine it works always okay so let me go back to the standard setup here and finally just to mention here okay remember that you have phone always remember that you have phone info so you can go here min mod okay phone info is you want more information about this okay so it's telling you this and also it's telling you where you have the source code now as you are curious about that interested about that so for instance you can go here in this directory or better now i already have it here let me open here a src and find that volume and src find a volume interpolation okay and surface interpolation and you're going to have all these skins imp implemented in open phone okay so maybe some people start to get law crazy here i want to use this and this don't waste your time you we know that linear ways uh, win is okay and if you need something different go for rtbd go for the meme mod but then it's up to you, you know to try all these options there are many many options for instance you have this one is q correct you know to add some correction in skewsness okay so feel free now to explore here okay then here you see multivariate schemes and then the Muscle skin. This one is actually a search order accurate. You have the gamma, the mint mod, limited schemes. Okay, more information here. Okay, super B. And usually you open there and you have some explanation and then also sometimes you have some references, okay, to the actual implementation. Then also uh, same you can do for the gradients. So you can go for and info let me go cell limited and see here that it gives you this information okay and then if you are interested you can go here okay so you are always here mm -mm. Uh, that one was in final volume final volume and here okay final volume final volume grab the skins yeah okay here and here you enter and you can and you will find all this okay so for instance you open here okay sometimes you have an explanation should be the, the h file okay so usually in the h file you have a short description okay and if you are feeling curious you can try to understand what is happening there but our, our this, that is not our purpose now to to program and understand that C++ so that requires a lot of knowledge and practice. So feel free now to investigate here. You have all the discretization schemes. Also, you have some stuff in solution methods, Laplacian schemes. Also, you find some stuff there. Okay, so this is all for this case. Okay, so remember to try to answer those exercises, uh, the exercise, the questions and and Feel free now to change to try all these combinations and try to find what is the one that is going to give you the best results. Also, you can change the mesh resolution, change the CFL number. So in this case, we, we run with this time here. Okay, by the way, this solver is not reporting the CFL number, but you can modify it. Okay, but you can you can you can try to increase the, the time step. Okay, you have many things to do. So that's all for this case. Okay, thank you for your attention. See you in the next tutorial. Bye.